I'm Kira Morgan. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Coffee with Kira, sponsored by The Human Being in Newport and Lincoln City. And today I'm excited to be here with the folks from, from Phoenix. Phoenix Wellness Center. I have Jen Metcalf <laughs> and Nicole Reardon. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to find out some more about the great things that Phoenix Wellness Center does and the great things they do for our community. Ladies, let's start with some introductions for those who don't know you as well as I do. Jen, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, my name is Jen Metcalf. I'm an enrolled Sletch tribal member. I live in Sletch. Um, historically, I've worked a lot with youth, prevention, um, social service, a lot of social services stuff. Um, I am the harm reduction coordinator here at Phoenix Wellness Center, and I do many things. Um, for Phoenix Wellness and for our community. So what is a harm reduction specialist? What do you do? <clears throat> well, I'm a harm reduction coordinator and what I do is um, create ways for people to have access to um, things to reduce harm, basically for people who are using, um, reducing uh, STIs, which is uh, sexually transmitted infections, um, access to um, health, there are a lot of harm reduction um, programs do do needle exchange. Um, that's one of the big um, things that harm reduction uh, programs do do, um, but also uh, access to um, Narcan uh, to prevent an overdose to reverse um, a death, a possible death. Um, and I give out uh, condoms. <laughs> Important. One of our people here say we have important. the most condoms in all of Lincoln County. <laughs> um, yes, and we give out a lot. But anyways, um, harm reduction really is meeting somebody where they are. You know, coming mm -hmm. along with somebody and meeting them right where they are, giving them the love and the space um, that they need to be able to um, reduce harm for themselves. Perfect. Wonderfully put. What a great job you have. And Nicole, tell us a little bit about you and all the incredible things that you do here. I'm Nicole Reardon. I'm uh, an employee at Phoenix Wellness Center. I'm an enrolled Osage tribal member. I uh, let's see. I will start with <laughs> I do a lot of outreach throughout our community with law enforcement, um, all sorts of agencies. Uh, I also am a peer support specialist. Um, I also work with Jen with harm reduction. I do all the Narcan events um, and education events around fentanyl use or and or substance use. Um, she's just the everything you do a yeah. lot you <laughs> respond to late crisis so those like um on a crisis response when people call when police call or the hospital calls you respond to those i would say mostly outreach will will blanket everything i do um my position here is is pretty open to whatever the need of our community is so like jen said the harm reduction approaches meeting people where they're at. So a lot of the time I meet those people at their very most broken state, whether it be on the sidewalk, in their tents, in their homes, um, at the grocery store, where, wherever they're comfortable with meeting at. Uh, and then Jen follows right behind me with everything that she has to offer. So it's, it's, I would say a team effort. That's amazing. And let's talk a little bit about uh, why you guys do this. And that is that a very harmful drug is, or lots of drugs are in our community, but something is being done um, about it, and that is uh, fentanyl awareness. Let's talk about that. You go ahead. So fentanyl awareness, awareness we are uh, creating a team of individuals that are going to work with our community in order to come beside the people that are struggling with their fentanyl use, meaning yeah, it is killing people. It's killing all of our people. It's it's killing people at an extremely rapid rate. And by coming beside them, I mean we're gonna start to educate people better on on how to how to talk to somebody, how to to help somebody, how to get somebody the services they need, and or try to help the youth to understand what that process looks like. Right. So, like for example, if you're struggling and this is your daughter and your daughter knows you're struggling we're going to provide that service to wrap around to help your child understand how to help you get the help you need um, and reducing the stigma around the fear of opening up and talking about things that we're going through. 
that's really important. Uh, and because it's a, a complete family approach, it's family and friends that are going to provide that support to lift the person out of where they are, right? Yes, and unfortunately, in the community um, right now, with the the drugs that are filtrating through our community, it's affecting everyone. It's not just affecting the person that lost their life; it's affecting the children. It's affecting the people that have worked with them as treatment providers is prevent preventing them from gaining those resources and, and having the comfortability to reach out. These are people that we're losing that, that have had some time in recovery um, and have an understanding of what that support looks like, but something's get, getting lost in the translation. So that's where mm -hmm. Jen and I are trying to pick up the slack and come behind and say, Hey, we're here. Like how, how can we continue to help? Yeah. And let's talk a little <laughs> bit about, um, fentanyl use in our community, um, we're seeing a lot of overdoses. This is an extremely dangerous drug. Um, Nicole, you and I have had this conversation multiple times, but it's still out there and it's still a problem. I think fentanyl in the drugs that are being used is always going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like the way to handle that is education, reducing stigma around people that use drugs, um, because those who are using, I am a, a person in long-term recovery, um, <clears throat> those who are using are ashamed, and that's what keeps them out there, guilt and shame. And then the dependence on uh, an opiate that puts their physical body in severe pain if they're not using. And I think reducing the stigma around people using drugs um, is going to help um, bring, call people in and not call them out, right? I mean, we did a fentanyl eradication march and um, it was to make a point that we're taking a stand and not just that, but we're here for you. Like we, we see you, we're here and we want, we want to help you. Like if people need to uh, want to use less or find an alternative to using um, drugs because, I mean, people will say, I'm just using meth. Well, fentanyl was in, in your meth. I'm just using cocaine. Well, fentanyl was in your cocaine. Not only fentanyl, but xylazine is another drug that's here. And that is a very dangerous drug. And um, <clears throat> that was used for um, large animals, um, tranquilizers. They call it trank. Um, but that's also in, in drugs. And that eats you from the inside out. <laughs> um, and so... There's just so many damaging things that are taking place, but fentanyl is the one that's killing our people. Fentanyl kills you. So it, not everyone who takes fentanyl dies, but they do get addicted to it and it can be lethal. Can we talk about that? Mm -hmm. Because I think that's something that's hard for people to understand. So fentanyl was created originally for people at end of life care, excruciating pain, um, pain management. It was created in a pharmaceutical lab to manage people with excruciating pain. Um, I use the example of, of a surgery, right? That medication was, was developed, uh, that, that person, the anesthesiologist, the head of your bed is, is there to make sure that when they give you these drugs that your, your body's able to function, it's able to stay at a, a resting state pace in order for them to perform the surgery. But while they're performing the surgery, there's also that person at the head of your bed, making sure your vitals are good. Mm -hmm. um, there is no anesthesiologist behind a fentanyl user on the street. The chemical makeup of fentanyl is changes so rapidly. So we'll talk about meth and how they took Sudafed off the market, right? There, there is no specific drug that gets put into fentanyl enough that we could say, let's take it off the market. The legislature gets everything in order to be able to take that drug off the market and they tweak the molecules just enough that that drug is no longer something that is on the market to be able to remove, right? So there is unfortunately at the moment, no way to get ahead of and say, we're gonna take this drug off the market to stop the manufacturing of it to, to the level that they're making it, unfortunately. So we are seeing people die at a rapid rate. Um, so I it's work. because it's changing. So somebody may have used fentanyl or not known that fentanyl was in their meth or their coke and cocaine um, and not known. And then they get a different tweak of it. And that's what may kill. 
Is that kind of sort of? So I guess think of it like uh, I had somebody just explain this to me the other day. I used to use making a batch of chocolate chip cookies, but actually okay. when you bake a batch of chocolate chip cookies, you might get a cookie that has two chocolate chips in it. Jen gets one with 10 and I get one with 30. So if you can think of it in your brain as that same makeup, right? That fentanyl pill, there's, there's two grains of salt in that pill potentially that could kill you. Uh, so when, when you divide a pill with three of us, or you take a pill with three of us, you might get that one that, that doesn't have any in it. Um, and then you might get the one that, that has a huge lethal dose in it. You're, there's no way to know because it's not chemically processed in a pharmaceutical mm -hmm. lab, right? So in a lab, they make a medication to disperse equally. So we could cut a pill between everyone in this room from a pharmacy and we would all get equal parts. If you could have filled pill off of a street grade drug, you're going to, who knows how much you're going to get. It might not affect any of us, or it might kill all three of us, or it might just overdose you. Um, so there, there is no way for medical or law enforcement to come beside and understand how to control or, or help people understand what that looks like. The also other unfortunate thing is there is no statistics that are able to say, this is what long-term fentanyl use does to you because they change the chemical makeup so much that we, we just get to understand what the chemical makeup looks like and then they change it again. So what does that look like for our mental health? What does that look like for our people mm -hmm. down the road, right? I work with clients that have just started using less than a month ago and are so mm -hmm. addicted that they can't stop on their own. Um, I, I'm also in recovery. I used for 13 years and I couldn't stop on my own after 13 years, but I cannot imagine being in a world of a drug so strong that literally controls your physical and mental <clears throat> well-being in less than a month. Um, and that's if you make it that month, right? Uh, I was told by a client recently that you, you can't afford to use anymore. It's not an option. Uh, your, your option to use if you choose to use your signing your death certificate. And that's kind of a grim example, but that's, that's the truth. Thank you for explaining that, Nicole, because I think that's really important for people to understand. Um, folks who have no experience with drugs um, and don't know about addiction, it's hard to understand from the outside looking in what that looks like. And um, I kind of compare it to a domestic violence situation where people on the outside look and go, mm -hmm. oh, well, why don't they just quit? But that's not an easy option to be able to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. It takes as many times as it takes. Or also think about having a surgery, right? You're having a major surgery. Uh, your provider is going to give you a bunch of pain medication to take home. Depending on, on how you choose to take that for your pain, right? I, I was in the medical field for a long time, so I know how that works. You you take your medication and you wake up in 10 minutes for the longest 10 minutes of sleep you've ever had and you're still in excruciating pain, your first thought is to take your medication because it feels like you've been asleep for hours when in reality it's been 10 minutes. It is literally no different with, with the drugs that they're using on the street today and an addict that's still mm -hmm. suffering. They don't know. They don't realize. Um, so I, that's why I like to use that example of the anesthesiologist behind your bed because mm -hmm. it is just like that. When you wake up from surgery, you wake up in a room and you're like, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. The addict is the same. And a, a drug addict has that same thought process. How did I get here? Mm -hmm. um, so changing the stigma around it being a drug addict and realizing that this is a drug that is, yes, it's a drug, um, but it is literally controlling our, our society. Yeah. It, is, it is taking control of people in a way that we've never seen before. So how do we come beside it? By doing things like the fentanyl march, by standing up and saying, this isn't, this isn't something we're going to accept, but we're going to love you through it. We're going to help you get through it. And we're going to walk through every single step. Is it easy to do? No, it's going to be the hardest, easiest thing you've ever done. We're going to walk through it with you. We're going to show you how to do that. And unfortunately, because of the way the drug changes, I still learn something new every single day. Um, I just have to be open to change and open to understanding and open to say, I'm going to meet you wherever you're at, no matter what that looks like for me, I'm going to meet you where you're at because Unfortunately, in the in the world that we live in today, that's that's what we have to do because they're not going to walk through our doors. And yeah. these aren't people. These are people who are working individuals, um, who are parents, uh, or kids and kids, um, seniors. A lot of times, people associate drug use with 
people on the street. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Let's dispel that right now. <clears throat> that isn't the case. And I think that that's been spoke about for many years now that it's not just people on the streets, that it's, um, yes, regular people that you're walking alongside. And I think just carrying the message of um, what is out there and what that does look like, again, uh, reducing the stigma of uh, a drug addict, of what that looks like, is going to allow our community to be able to open their eyes and see, I don't know if you use drugs or not, you know, you may not, but I'm too again, much of a control freak. <laughs> yeah, but then again, it's but like, I don't know. When, people, when I meet some people, they are baffled by the fact that I was a, a drug addict. Like, they can't believe it. And yeah, it was hardcore. Um, but I think just representing um, that and continuously represent that to let people know um, it is awareness, it is information, it is education, it is uh, community mobilization, it is. Um, coming together and having a clear same message that no matter what, um, you could uh, do a campaign um, on reducing fentanyl use. You don't use drugs, but you could do that mm -hmm. and, and have an impact and make mm -hmm. a statement. And um, it's the services, you know, once people are like, I'm done, I'm done. I, I can't do this anymore. Um, I, I, I'm not well. Um, I need help. And but there's help for folks and a lot of times they think oh i'm going to get locked up in in a center and it's going to cost me a lot of money and i can't afford you know all those things the kind of excuses in a sense mm -hmm. come forward right they do mm -hmm. um but but those that's just it they're excuses <laughs> yeah there's always tomorrow yeah yeah um they're just excuses that can be overcome mm -hmm. with help right they can they, they can, and it's really, a lot of people say, um, I've heard it said that it's a choice, you know, using is a choice. And I've reflected on that for many years, just even about myself. Like when I was getting loaded, was that a choice? Like, I think it was a choice until it wasn't, Right. you know? Good point. And um, Very good I point. couldn't stop. And no matter how many times that I told myself, this is the last time. Like, I can't live like this anymore. I still got loaded the very sick. next day or the one hour later because I would be so sick yeah. that I didn't know what to do, like, except for the use. I knew that using was going to make me feel better. And I did that for many years. I had lots of children. I did not know how to stop using. And um, I did. I, I was helped, you know. I mean, I was forced, but, you know. Some people have to be forced. <laughs> and that's um, okay then, you know, whatever gets you to the path of recovery, right? But then I realized that um, I, it was a choice until I didn't have one. And uh, I think it's important for us to remember that everybody has a, a difference of opinion. Everybody wants to view things the way that they see it. They prejudge people, so it's pretty prejudice. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes down to it, when we see these people who um, are using fentanyl, either intentionally or not even knowing that it's in their drug, um, they are they have a very hard time. It's like they don't have a choice is how they feel. There are there is options. There are ways to reach out to people. Literally, we're out in the public. There are crisis <laughs> mobile units. There is harm reduction services. There's four harm reduction services in Lincoln County alone. That's a lot for this county. Mm -hmm. um, and each, each harm reduction program responds in a way to, to come alongside those addicts that need help or come alongside those who are, are homeless and being hurt and mm -hmm. actually are using, but they don't disclose that. We, we get to figure that out. Um, so, And it, it doesn't is, always have to involve law enforcement in jail, right, ladies? Not, I'll just say this. I, I work mm -hmm. with law enforcement a lot. Um, grateful for all of the law enforcement in our county we've built a really good relationship with trust with them mm -hmm. so call me um and i i will respond with them but i've developed a relationship of trust right so they know that once i get there they're they're okay to leave um and it it does help it reduces like jen said the stigma uh, it, it is scary right i remember when i was using the last person i was even going to try to talk to was somebody that was going to tell me to go to treatment but i for sure wasn't going to talk to that person if a cop was standing there mm -hmm. um 
so they view it as a badge of authority and that's that's scary to somebody that doesn't know how to understand that their their addiction isn't a choice anymore yeah my addiction started as a choice too until like jen said it wasn't um and for the last year and a half of my addiction it, it wasn't a choice every day i didn't want to use but i did because mm -hmm. it was what i did to cope with what i was going through so again i'd like to reflect back on what fentanyl is doing to our community that the approach is different the help is different the process for every single individual is completely different because of all of the things that add into just the fact that they're using you have mental health you have houselessness you have wounds you have medical issues you okay. have yes. dental yes. issues age. you yeah. have age is a big thing too. right mm -hmm. age age from from sixth grade to who knows um mm -hmm. I, I will say i was recently just working with someone 68 years old and never in my life would i thought that that individual was a fentanyl user um you know so so today it's, it looks different. Uh, I will say my addiction, I used to be able to look around and be like, that's a meth user, that's a meth user. Um, you can't do that with fentanyl. It's, it's completely different. Your body reacts different to it. Your appearance is different. These are everyday people. These aren't just, like I said, people on the street or, or people of less than. These are, uh, these are attorneys, these are judges, these are community members that, that are high profile people in our community that we don't even know are using, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's really important um, to reach out to people that you think are doing great uh, and ask them, how's your heart? Because if you don't reach out, how, how do I know? If I, just, if I just assume you're good because you appear good, if, if I just assume Jen's good because she, she is good, does does well she presents well right people that present well how do you know how do you know what's going on with them we don't and unfortunately that's that's the cycle and so how do we provide that support we just continue to meet people where they're at no matter where they're at let's talk about the fentanyl march mm -hmm. you've got another one coming up the first one was very successful you've got another one coming up um let's talk about when that is and how people can get involved we just uh, had a debrief yesterday from our first um, fentanyl march. <clears throat> we um, decided to have that on a Monday, or we decided on a Monday to have it on a Thursday. So it was a very short um, time to because <laughs> to plan. It's, yeah, <laughs> because it's a it, it's a response, right? And it's an right. impact, and it's like we don't have to take time to plan out for months to actually take a stand. And so um, we met yesterday with our with our team. Of people out at the Selects Tribe, um, and the county was uh, pre present. Phoenix Wellness was present in the tribe, and uh, we, and the Selects Valley School. And we came up with another date to keep this momentum going on June twenty seventh, right? June twenty seventh at six p.m. At six p.m. We are going to start at the Selects Community Health Clinic. We're going to march through tribal housing down through the trailer park. I mean, for those of you who are watching, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, we have, I have a plan. <laughs> we, have, we have a path. Yeah. And if you make us a map or something, yep. we can, and we'll have this information up on the website and our social media pages and things. Yeah, well. and we're gonna end at the rec center, um, the tribal rec center down the Celeste, um, all the way down uh, Buford, at the end of Buford. And we'll have a little celebration there at the end. We'll have a barbecue. We're going to do our silent witness, um, our fentanyl awareness silent witness uh, project. It's actually a campaign is what I want it to be. And it was birthed from Susie O'Toole. It was her Ooh. idea and her mm -hmm. vision. And we brought that to life for her with lots of partners, the builders. Um, is it called Builders? Yeah. Yeah. They uh, sponsored us with the plywood mm -hmm. and Selects Valley School youth, their shop class cut out the silhouettes and that will be coming at another day. And I hope that you're able to make it to that because it's very powerful and impactful um, for our community. We'll be doing that display, having people um, in recovery uh, share very short stories and um, complete that one. We'll be going to Toledo meeting with Rod Cross. <laughs> Rod Cross. Rod, if you're watching. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yes. So we'll be meeting with Rod Cross um, on the 26th at 6 p.m. in Toledo. 
because Toledo would like to have a fentanyl eradication march as well. Perfect. We would like to have these marches in um, all of Lincoln County. It's getting people on board to understand that um, we just need to let people know, like, we're here for you. And on, on the other part of that is we need to stop these people that are dealing. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, you know, like, stop selling it because Do you're you killing. Do you think this is going to help? Um, yeah. I think it will. I think that, I think it will. I think anything will help. The knocking on the door, these people are selling fentanyl. We can't do that <laughs> because that doesn't work. But right? it's That's being dangerous. Bold. Yeah. But I it's also it. being bold. <laughs> Having that boldness um, and saying, we're not going to tolerate that here. We aren't going to tolerate it. Not in our You're killing our not people. Our home. Not, not our home. No, and not no more. Um, just in Select alone, we have seven kids without a parent in a week. In one and that was seven from three children. different deaths, right? Correct. Two. Two different two deaths. Two deaths left yeah. seven children, children without a parent. Yeah. In, in one week. In one week. Just one week. What does that look like the rest of the month, the rest of the year? And ever. I would like to add to that that these are people we know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to discredit anywhere else in the in the community because obviously we have a, a close bond with our people. But with that being said, this whole community are our people. Yes. Uh, where our senses are, are are heightened to the awareness in Silets because it's a smaller encompass of mm -hmm. people, right? Um, but just because these parents, these students lost a parent it doesn't mean that that parent was from Silettes. Uh the right. kids are in Silettes. so yeah. i just want the community to be really aware that that these are deaths that we know about um mm -hmm. to be really really sad and honest with you i could sit here and name drop back and forth with you for well over a minute easily with people that we've lost mm -hmm. to a fentanyl overdose within the last year um that's sad that that it is like that that's why I want to keep doing what we're doing and it will make a difference because it's going to make people understand that, <clears throat> that there is the support out there. There are the people that you can reach out to and every single person in that March that has a yellow shirt on is a person of support. Somebody yes. that you can say, Hey, I saw you at that March. Mm -hmm. Can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. yep. So it's, it's, it's going to change the stigma. It's going to open up more lines of communication and it's going to teach people that that the people that are in this march are are a positive person within our community that you can reach out to no matter who it is yeah. in that crowd of people that crowd of people know what's going on and and are willing to step up to march to say I'm, i don't want this in our community i don't want this in our town how do we come beside these people we, we show them that we're here to support in a loving way we're not we're not out here trying to make people feel less than right. we're, we're trying to teach them that that we love you no matter what, and we're going to walk through this path with you, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. So just want people to be aware that this March, a lot of people probably have this, this thought of like, oh, you're trying to scare people. It's not about scaring people. It's or about shaming. loving. We're not trying to shame people. It's about loving people where they're at and saying, I understand that you're in your home using, and we're right outside your door to help you. How, how do we get the door to open enough to say, here we are? That, that's the message. And it's a and it's a stand, like you said, letting the dealers know, letting the people that are providing these drugs to our kids, to our families, to our seniors, we're not going to take it. No more. We're done. Not in Lincoln County. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's give <laughs> some contact information. Someone wants more information, they want to get involved, they want to help, or they need help. What do they need to do? If you want to get involved, I would suggest contacting Miss Jennifer Metcalf <laughs> because I am terrible about emails. So do not email me. Um, you can call Phoenix 541-272-5048. We are located at 145 North Coast Highway, Suite B in Newport between McKay's and the Salon. Please don't hesitate to reach out though, whatever that looks like. Um, call here, ask for me. I will meet you where you're at. Uh, if you want to know more about Narcan, you want to know more about fentanyl, you want to know more about how to get involved with supporting our community and, and our efforts to make a change in our community, please do not hesitate to reach out. No matter what that looks like for yourself, for your children, for whoever. Mm -hmm. I think 
what also is important before we do a contact is that prevention is to not forget about prevention because culture is prevention yes. and having the ability to be able to go upstream and see what is happening like mm -hmm. how can we um enmesh ourselves i want to say intervene but that's down the spectrum a little bit um to see what's happening and what are we doing what are we doing here so our people aren't going to die um because we are at the tail end of it right now um responding to deaths and so we want to we want to do prevention more prevention efforts um community collaboration and yes there are many um people that you can contact in lincoln county um phoenix wellness yes there's also other um places that are available around here and there's multiple treatment facilities and there's multiple resources so if you don't feel comfortable in one area and need to go to another so be it do that do whatever it takes to save your life all right thank you ladies so much for joining me on this important episode of coffee with kira again sponsored by the human being in newport at 6th street and highway 101 in lincoln city at the north end of the highway on the west side next to tlc credit union thanks for watching i'm kira morgan <laughs>